Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tupvid.com. The reason I've got this website up right here is because I want you to focus on the background. Notice how it's this gradient that starts up here and as we go down it never really repeats again. It's just up here. It, it's just floating there and it's just a solid color all the way down to the bottom. And that is one huge image to have to load in to get this really interesting background. Well, actually, the truth of it is, is that you can use CSS to achieve a very similar effect to this. Well, not very similar with the exact effect. It just depends on the image you create. So let's go over here to Dreamweaver. This is the page we're going to be editing. And um, I'm going to show you how exactly you can achieve that effect. And it's a very interesting background. It's a very interesting way to create a background, and it's a pretty cool, pretty darn cool way to do it. So the whole process actually starts right over here in Photoshop. So let me hop over to Photoshop right here. Here in Photoshop, we're going to create a new file. File size will be, ooh, well, let's go file new first. And well, let's stick with 640 by 400. That's what I have in here from whatever I was last working on. So I'm going to stick with that. That's fine. 640 by 400. I'm going to have to bring it to full screen view mode within Photoshop. And I want to create a multicolor gradient that is going to match the blues found on our site. So how can we quickly get those blue colors over here in Photoshop? Well, pretty easily. Select this image and let's take a look at where it's located. Well, it's logo.jpg. So we can come over here to the Files panel, go into Images, uh, Layout Images, look for logo.jpg and right click on it and say Open in Photoshop. Or we can simply select it and just choose Edit in PS or Edit in Photoshop. That's the Photoshop logo. Here it is in Photoshop. Perfect. Wonderful. Okay, the first thing I want to do is use the eyedropper tool and grab this lightest blue color. Now I'm going to hit Control Tab. That brings me to my other open document. I'm going to create a new layer real quick. Just new layer button right there. Grab the gradient tool and we're going to start editing a gradient. Here's actually the gradient I want, but I'm going to garbage that. I'm just going to choose any one of these standard just starting out gradients and I'm going to set three fill spots in. Notice when I click them they fill with my foreground color, that light blue. That's pretty cool. Alright, now we're going to set locations. This is a zero. I want the second one the location to be 25. The third one I want the location to be 50. Fourth one I want the location to be 75. And the last one, I want the location to be 100. I'm going to hit OK now. Now, this is not the gradient we want. Matter of fact, I'm just going to hit F to quickly move me out of full screen view mode. And now here, I'm going to open up the gradient editor. And I'm going to select this first color stop, the red. I'm going to double click. And up pops the select stop color dialog. I'm going to choose this lightest blue, just like I've said as my foreground color, and hit OK. I'm going to select the second one, and I'm going to choose the darkest blue out here. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to select the middle one, and here I'm going to select one of these middle blues. Maybe that one there is pretty nice. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to select this one here, and this is going to be that lightest blue again, which I believe it already is, yes. And over here, I'm going to choose another mid blue, just like that. There we have our gradient. Hit OK. We can now get rid of this Regent logo. We're done with that. We have our colors. Hit F to bring that back to full screen view mode. I'm just going to hold Shift with the gradient tool. Make sure reverse is not checked on. And I'm just going to pull it straight down from the top. Holding Shift to constrain my gradient to a straight line. Now, over here I've got that mid blue. So I double click on my gradient editor. It's this blue here. So I want to come in here and just copy this hex code because that's the color at the very bottom. I'm going to double click on there and copy that hex code because I'm not going to remember that. I'm just going to highlight it, right click, copy, hit OK, hit OK again. We're done here in Photoshop just about. However, I want to come back into Dreamweaver and just, I don't know, just somewhere here on the page, just paste that hex code just in case we copy something else, just so I have it. I'm just going to put a pound before it as well because you need to include that pound when working with the web. That's just so I don't forget about it. Now here in Photoshop, I want to grab the crop tool and I'm just going to draw a very small sliver. These backgrounds are created with a one pixel wide image. I'm going to create it a little wider than one pixel just so you can see what I'm doing. But the smaller you can get this image, the faster the loading time. Click the check, and we've got a pretty wide image here. Next, we go File, Save for Web and Devices. 
Here you want to save it as a JPEG and you want to keep the quality somewhat high because you want to retain that exact blue edge. If you start op trying to optimize it too much, the color shifts a little bit and you're going to see a noticeable seam when we go and put this in the background of our page. And you're going to see why that's going to be kind of important in just a little bit. I've already saved a copy of this, so I'm going to uh, hit cancel here. And uh, I'm going to drag this image that I have into Dreamweaver. I'm going to come back to Dreamweaver actually. And I'm going to delete this hexadecimal code because I don't need that one. And um, I want to come over here to Bridge. And I've got this BG image here, which I'm just going to drag over into Dreamweaver. Just drop it right on the root level of the site. So now that we have that file in Dreamweaver, let's take a look at how we can use it. Well, first thing we need to do, let me just close up the Files panel. I'm just going to select anywhere out of my site that's blank. I'm just going to click the gray background and choose Page Properties. And here I'm going to set a background color. I happen to know that the code is not actually the one that I just picked because I've got a slightly different blue background that's going in. 4988A7 is the blue that I want. I'm going to hit Apply and you can see my background immediately changes to that blue. Now I also have this background image selector. I'm going to browse for a background image and I'm going to hit site root here to bring me to my site root and there's BG image. Remember we just copied it into the root level of our site. Double click on that and uh, let's set repeat to, well no repeat, hit apply. Okay, notice it doesn't really look like anything happened but the image did show up. It's right over here along the side but it's not repeating at all so it's just there. Alright, we want it to repeat so let's choose repeat and apply. Now what happens is we've got it repeating all over the place. You can see it repeats all the way down and if I were to save this, bring it out in the web, doesn't really look like we expected it to look. So that's not quite what we want. Let's come back in here, choose Page Properties. And what we want to do is not repeat this along the y-axis, but if you remember from math, in math class, geometry, uh, and other, re the x-axis, excuse me, is the horizontal axis. So we want to repeat this horizontally, which is going right across the screen. We're going to hit Apply, hit OK, and check out what we've got. I'm going to save this and preview it out in the browser. Look at this. We've got this interesting gradient, and it looks like it just fades into this blue, which continues down the screen. If I right click back here and hit View Background Image, I can see that it's only this thin background image that is creating that background. So that's all you need to create those interesting backgrounds. And it's just a little bit of CSS there, which is what we use to create that background in Dreamweaver. And you've got yourself a pretty darn cool background. And those are some really easy to create backgrounds and it's a really interesting uh, background you can add to your website. That's how you do it. So I hope you learned something from this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Please go check out the website. That's www.tutbid.com. Thank you for watching.